hello and welcome back to From Breaker. We are finally gonna have a chat with Bruver, most likely. Come on. Bruver is so damn close. But I do Valerians end up running into the highest <laughs> section of monsters and monsters range. all the time. Snow crunched under their boots, cold air stung their lungs, and the wind snapped at their cloaks. <sighs> Meave wiped sweat from her brow and turned to Rain. There! By the rocks! We shall... The rest of her words were drowned out by a powerful blast. The entire mountain rumbled with a low, vibrating roar. The sound grew louder, echoing off the rocks, splitting their ears. The Lyrians looked around, disoriented. Few heard Gabor's warning. Then I just stand there! Get behind that rock! Quick! Hurry! Me followed the dwarf's gaze and cried out in terror. The snow stuck to the mountainside had started to slide down the slope, sending up mists of icy dust. Before she could react, the white torrent knocked her to her knees, crushing her and smothering her into the ground. All she felt after that was all-encompassing cold and fear. Meave survived. The dwarves no! who ran to the Lyrian's rescue dug her out of the snow in time. Some of her soldiers were not so lucky. The queen looked at their bodies, blue frozen. Next to them lay dead horses, demolished wagons. The losses were enormous. Meave wiped her cheek. Her tears burned her frozen skin. Gabor spoke a while with the leader of the Mahakam Guard Patrol that had come to their rescue. His face was dour. What? What have you learned? Uh. I'll, I'll tell you all in good time. But the first... You need a warm drink, good victuals. Well, yeah, I can't need that. No, Gabor. I no, need to I, find I, I changed my mind. Happened here. Yeah, tell me that first. Well, it was an avalanche. And everyone's bad, right? Of course it was an avalanche. I'm no fool. But what caused it? What was that noise? Um, <clears throat> signal horns. Ours. So you brought this snow down on us? Dwarves! Well, I, but, uh, unawares. Unawares? What nonsense? Go, go on. Explain, in brief. See, we clean our mount regularly. The, the, the way men folk shovel snow off their roofs. Otherwise, the whole shebang would come tumbling down on our heads. When snow's gathered deep enough, we blast our horns to cause a controlled avalanche. Then we need to, but, sweep up a wee bit in the road safe. Mm -hmm. All well and good, but why did you decide to clean up right as I was passing through? Yeah, I mean, that's suspicious. I'm wondering that myself. Schedule says next cleaning should have been a week from now. But someone has the route to be cleared earlier. Who? Me, I I'll tell you. But first, promise you'll... That I kill, kill that person? Who? Hey. Ovin Ip Klenvok. The Nilfgaardian Emissary. Must have found out you'd be going through. The bastard. Reynard. Reynard! What? Why are you shouting Reynard at Gabor? Come on. Wait. Wait. I understand you're a wee bit upset. You've every right. But you'll never prove Ovain meant you harm. The sly weasel will make sure he didn't dirty his own paws. I've no such scruples. I'll find him and kill him. And then? How'd you tell that tale to Bruva? Meave, you're justly taught, but for the love, just this once, let it go. Or you'll leave Mahakam with near a scrap to show for it. Moments later, scouts reported Ovain was camped to the north of the accident site. Meave had to decide how much she was willing to risk to get her revenge on the Imperial Emissary. Well, let's kill him. But apparently I lost a lot of wood and gold. And maybe I lost some men. No? Just, we just lost some resources. I I kind of almost 
assumed, suspected that maybe this is the time that the game takes away my deck and gives me something else, but maybe that's, that will never happen. By the Elder Sideburns, I had no notion anyone was in the Vale. Hmm. Oh, hey, New Guardians. Lady, whispered one of the scouts. Left of the path. Meave squinted. The Nilf Guardians had taken shelter from the falling snow under a rocky outcropping. The smell of roasting meat wafted from their campfire, and echoes of laughter could be heard. The black clad soldiers had reason to celebrate. They had just decimated Meave's company without even drawing their weapons. Jokes on you, I'm back. I lost some wood and gold and a little. Uh, some recruits. Meave's gaze caught something else. A metal container into which the Nilfgaardians tossed bones once they'd been gnawed clean. It looked strangely familiar. Only after a moment did the Queen understand it was an overturned Lyrian helmet dug out of the snowy grave of one of her men. The Horsons! Meave hissed. They'll pay for this. Meave! Asking your last time keep a cool heat, whispered Gabor. You want vengeance? I get it. But think of the cost. If so much as a hair gets plucked from a vein's head, Bruver will never forgive you, and you can kiss any hope of aid goodbye. Silence followed, finally to be broken by one of the scouts. Milady, what's the order? Do we attack? Can't. No said the Queen after long deliberation. But, my lady, they... I know what they did, and that I shall never forget nor forgive, said Meave, placing a hand on her scout's shoulder. But breaking Dwarven law only plays into the North Guardian's hand, causing us to lose allies and our chance for victory. Meave brushed the snow from her trousers and straightened her spine. Avenge our comrades we shall. Not here. But in the fields of Lyria and Rivia. The Lyrians resumed their march with heavy, beleaguered steps. Their path still piled high with the snow brought down by the Nilf Guardians. Well, if Bruver doesn't help us, <laughs> I guess we're gonna have some extra thing to do around here. While passing the mining settlement of Kolstok, Meave heard the sounds of battle. Expecting she would see monsters swarming dwarves, the queen set off at a gallop to the rescue. Her braid blew about in the wind like a banner, showing her men in which direction to attack. The dwarves she saw, however, were not engaged in a battle against Shalemars and Barbigazis. No, they were going at one another. Luckily, no weapons had yet been drawn, but given the dwarves have hands the size of bread loaves, this did not necessarily mean there would be no deaths. Oi, lads! roared Gabor Zigrin. What's this foolishness? Calm the hell down, damn it! Gabor's intervention proved successful. The dwarves limited themselves to verbal jousting. Meave, who was no stranger to barrack room talk, nonetheless turned crimson at the dwarves' cursing. Piecing together the obscenities, Meave concluded they were debating an old quarrel about the height of a certain mountain or rather, of the Twin Peaks atop it. One of them lay in the territory of Clan Dahlberg, while the other in the Hoog's land. Each family felt their peak was the highest, all measurements indicating the contrary being total fabrications. Queen! started Gabor, nervously chewing his moustache. They're asking if you, as an impartial and a fair-minded wench to boot, wouldn't you wish to settle their idiot squabble once and for all? Bear-mended bench. All right. Meave knew well that this type of age-old quarrel could easily end in bloodshed, so she resolved to help. Representatives of the two clans gave her a strange mechanism she was to use to measure elevation. All that was left was for the queen to button her coat up to the neck and scale the Twin Peaks. What the hell? Time to end this delicate feud. Really? For all. Is it over here? All right. So, when she and her force had traveled half the way to the first, she heard a long roar that made snow shells detach and descend. Without waiting for her scouts to return with reports, Meave drew her sword. 
Seems a little odd. Like, all right, let's climb two mountains. Really? One round battle. We're always in the red. Not great. To reap, a time to sow, a time to die. No, I max value. So we get we play some drummers, maybe. Army's a waste of time for one like me. Or it's a lot of armor. Nice. Clever little contraption they give us. Work of a norm, of course. Hell. Okay. You mad? Put the back on fire. Going to doggy. Okay. Wow. Left, right. Left, right. Hopefully he doesn't have a lot of snowy walls. Like he does. God, I'll manage. I gained a full week. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Hmm. Just move my flag if I really want to. But probably making him take damage is better. Okay. Well, we gotta still play a drummer. Again and again and again. Apparently, if something dies. Though, I guess that helps. Her Majesty is exceptional. This could hurt. Army's a waste of time for one. Oh, no, actually, she's gonna stay alive. Oh my god, current boost demand 180. Seems okay. It's not too late to walk away. That's the one of an eye from our full eagle away. Okay. Is that a pass situation? I still gotta play a unit? Why? Can I reel the Kree out? Ah, should have listened to the old lady. Okay. 180 boost on everybody. 205? What is this? It seems broken. That's way too much, isn't it? I guess I'm gonna take it. It's it's okay. Just 205 boost on everybody. Cool, cool, cool. Nothing personal, I assure you. Sure, sure. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how I took so much damage. But apparently, I did. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Apparently, heals up pretty good. <laughs> Getting to work. Hmm. Well, we can wait. Wait, what? I think he's just overkilling something. 
They're doing way too much damage. That's why it feels... That's why it's so broken. Got nothing to target. Okay. That was a um, fairly decisive battle. Take those measurements and let's be gone from this place. <laughs> the Lyrians managed to repel the monsters and reach both peaks. Upon each, Meave ordered her men to take the measurements. While waiting, she admired the breathtaking view of the Mahakaman Massif. The dwarven contraption left no room for doubt. The peak within the Dahlberg clan territory was two feet higher than that within Hoog territory. Gabor was clearly displeased with the results. Oh, damn it all! I'd hope you'd prove Bruver's clan was in the right. He'd have been content to see the Dalbergs knock down a peg or two. And, possibly, he'd have been more inclined to help you, said the dwarf in frustration. Then, after a pause, he added, No. Only you saw what the device showed, Queen. Perhaps you could, eh, uh, recalibrate the results a wee bit? What about the laws? Give the true measurements. To lie would be simple, true, said Meave. Yet to forget the matter would be so much harder. No, Gabor, I shall tell the truth. The Queen's tone made it clear the discussion was over. Gabor let the matter lie, and Meave's force began its descent down the mountainside. Alright, what do we have here? I don't care, I just want to be known as trustworthy. Chesty! Oh, okay, fine. The ball the healer. Let's go back. Guys! It's settled. The dwarves of both clans had been waiting with bated breath for the expedition's return and report. As soon as Meave announced the results, the Dahlbergs rolled barrels of beer out into the square and began to celebrate. Naturally, the Hoogs were disappointed, yet they accepted Meave's results as final. At last, they had come to trust her. You see? I tell the truth. If someone... Well, come on, it's not that hard. Someone can easily double check it. Talk with these guys, or can I? For frostbite, it best avail yourself of some onion. As Meave neared Langbridge, she ordered her bugler to announce her arrival, then retired to her tent to freshen up. Gascon was already inside, awaiting her. Come on, Gascon, get the fuck out. I do not seem to recall summoning you. In that case, I must tell you to fret not. Nothing wrong with your memory. I've come with no agenda. Spontaneously, call it, to chat. I see. Hmm. Then I propose you leave. Just as spontaneously, call it. I must don fresh clothes. I'm to see the Elder soon, and I'd prefer to not smell of horse sweat. Doubt it'd make much difference to him. <laughs> and be assured, I know what I speak of. When last we met, I found myself standing downwind of him. A pungent experience. That's my patient, Gascon. My patience is near its end, Gascon. Either state your business, or I shall have the guards escort you out. Ugh. Not a hint of a sense of humor. There's something you ought to know. And decidedly before you meet with Bruva. The sights we cleared of beasts. I ferreted a bit. Noted something peculiar. Any notion what it was? None. The monumental dwarven architecture, perhaps? Bones, my dear Meave. Dwarven bones. Now, guess what I found on them? Wait, don't dare give me any hints. Bite marks. Of course. After all, they'd been gnawed clean of all flesh by monsters. Incidentally, making it quite easy to spot other markings. Ones made by axes and swords. To be certain, I showed the bones to our medics, and they confirmed my conclusion. Meaning what? 
that the entire clan, the Fuchses, did not perish due to an invasion of beasts from the depths. The monsters merely ate the bodies and occupied empty homes. Now, I shared my discovery with Gabor, and guess what he did? He panicked. He started to squirm, babble nonsense. I wager my right arm, he's hiding something. Blast. Overly eager to aid us from the start he was. I might have sent something. Yeah, it was it was quite the bro from the start. I shall have him summoned at once. And I thank you, Gascon. I won't forget this. Minutes later, Gabor stood before the Queen. At first, he tried to mislead her with evasive answers, but as her pointed questions demolished one clumsy excuse after another, he had to give in. Why not just allow me to do this? Hmm? Storyteller guy, why not allow me to actually question Gus Khan? It's not like a very hard thing to do. It's it's just two pictures and some voice acting with some lines. As King Desmond said after a hefty squirt in his hose, we can't sweep this under the rug. If you think I welcome jests in this moment, you err. My fingers itch to summon the hangman. Right. So. Tis true. I misled you. On our clan elders' orders, supposed to make sure you destroyed Boris Rump and Davos Abyss thoroughly enough to leave nae a trace. What? Why? What did they wish to hide? They was home to the Fuchses, our mortal enemies. They'd been a-boiling our hineys for ages, thumbing their noses, taking what they want, when they want. And the Elder-in-Chief didn't give a plowing wit. So to stop them, our clan, we did the unpardonable. The Zigrin Elders saw their chance and they... Gods. So you were responsible for the deaths of all those dwarves? Me? I, I, I didn't raise a finger. Tried to stop them, in fact. Did you truly not stop this massacre? I don't think you tried hard enough, because you didn't even tell anyone that they did it, though, right? You know? That would have certainly helped if you tell the those fuck, foxes dwarves that they are going to do it. You claim not to have taken part, but neither did you do anything to stop the massacre. What was I to do, exactly? The Elders had decided. They a dwarf would listen to me. You might have informed the Elder-in-Chief. The guilty would have been punished. The guilty? You didn't ken Bruva. He'd punish the whole clan. Women, children. No exceptions. That may be. Meave. Queen. I'm begging you. He cannot ever learn of this. Aye. I want a hack flame too when I think what the Elder's done. But other way it'd bring but more pain and death. I'll think about it. I need to consider what's right. Meanwhile, Gascon, make sure Gabor remains our guest. Of course. I'll let you know if he so much as rolls his eyes towards an escape route. Alright, I'm... I'm thinking about letting him go, and not telling anyone about this. Oh. <clears throat> You're approaching- oh, uh, yeah, yeah, We can keep going. Yep. I'm done. Let's continue. Bruva stood by the bridge like a statue, arms crossed, eyes squinting. Meave sighed inside. She stood little chance of having a pleasant chat. Elder-in-Chief, sir. No Saren and Grayson here, lass. Plowing humans. Always out to fix things. Always end up cocking them up. I didn't cock it up. You think you're due glory, do you? Monster slayer Meave. Patroness of dwarves. Blast it. That's right. What do you think? Why didn't I exterminate those beasts myself, eh? Go on, tell me. I don't know. Suck. For you. What? For I didn't want to. For something didn't affect, damn it. So I resolved to not destroy their nests and evidence till I learned the truth of who done it. Oh. Postponed it all those years expressly. 
though your subjects were dying. Exactly. I didn't need no lectures from the likes of you. Justice must be served. That's worth any price. And I was close. Had leads. And now, it's all gone to hell. You flooded the Vore's abyss. You brought Poro's rump down on itself. And I'll never care who killed the Fuchses. Understand? Never! Get the Zigris. Well, I'm sorry about that. My sincere apologies. I did not know. Of course you didn't, humans. First they cock it up, then they ask how it works. <laughs> I'm most eager to give that breed of yours a yank and kick you out beyond the gate. But I canna, for the clans are grateful to you. Fools, fools, all fools. Come on, Boover, you're so grumpy. They forced me to give you an audience, official like, with witnesses, all at the foot of Mount Carbon. Come on then, time to move on. But I'm going to ring you out so hard you'll wish you never left that Nuff Guardian dungeon. Bruver set off at a brisk pace, cursing under his breath. The Queen took a deep breath, counted to five in her head, and set off after him. Audience at Mount Carbon. Oh. Maybe? Before the big talk, we're gonna take a break. So, thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.